Hi, this is Don McAllister and welcome to another Tip of the Week video. Now before the tips, uh, I just got back from NAB in Las Vegas checking out the latest and greatest in video production. Now it's actually the NAB show, which is the National Association of Broadcasters show, and it's both a trade show and a training event. And whilst most of the announcements don't really impact on us as general Mac and iOS users, it's a great experience and I find it really valuable to keep abreast on what's happening in the production space for screencasts online. One of the things that I picked up on is to see just how far 4K video has come as both a production and display technology. Pretty much everything is now being recorded and edited in 4K by professionals, not just us iPhone 6S and iPad Pro users, and 4 and even 5K displays are now really common. Of course, the missing piece is the distribution of 4K content to the consumer, but surely that can't be too far off. And whilst nothing was announced by Apple at the show, uh, you can certainly bet that 4K video support will be on the next version of the Apple TV. And I think that's a pretty safe bet. Now I will be covering some of the benefits in recording in 4K in future tip videos. A few weeks ago, I covered making sure that you had iCloud backups switched on to ensure that you had automatic backups of all your iOS devices. Now Oscar asked via Twitter, is backing up to the Mac the only way you can have encrypted backups so that when you restore from it, you don't have to enter your passwords for every app or service that you use? Well, the good news is that from iOS 9, 9.3, uh, iCloud backups are always encrypted, whereas on the Mac, encryption is optional. I also had an email from Margaret, uh, who was trying to help an elderly relative set up iCloud backup, but had run out of space on her free iCloud account. And it transpires that she had over 90 Kindle books on her iPad, but couldn't find a way to delete them. Now, let me show you the two ways you can fix this, not just for the Kindle app, but for any app that you have on your iPad or iPhone. Now, there are two different techniques to use to remove data to stop it being backed up. And although I'm going to use the Kindle app as a demonstration, it actually applies to many other apps as well. But let's go ahead and use the Kindle app. So if I go into the Kindle app, you'll see I've got a dozen or so um, books that are downloaded to this particular device. I can delete the books once I've finished reading them on the Kindle app. So if I go into the list view, just swipe across, you'll see there's an archive button. If you tap archive, that actually removes it from the device itself and saves some space. The other option is to actually remove the app itself from being backed up. And to do that, if we go into settings, go into storage and iCloud usage, and then under iCloud into manage storage. Uh, once it's refreshed, we see all the different things that are getting backed up on the iPad. Now, because I have several iOS devices, um, I've got several listed here. So I've got backups for an iPhone, for the iPad Air 2, which is this one, the machine I'm actually using, uh, a 6S Plus, and another iPhone. Now from here, I can actually delete a backup if I no longer use it. So this Don's iPhone, for instance, I can delete that backup, I'll just say delete, and that's saved me 36 megabytes of data. So you might want to go through, if you have any old iOS devices that you can get rid of backups, do that. But if I want to exclude the Kindle apps data from the backup of the iPad Air 2, if I just tap on the device, you'll see all the different applications that are currently being backed up. Now at the moment, it's not really using up much space, but just as an example, I want to remove the Kindle app from my backup. I just tap on here, it will delete the backups for the Kindle app and save me that space within iCloud itself. So that's it for this week. Uh, don't forget you can receive a full video tutorial each week by becoming a Screencast Online member over at screencastonline.com or check out the SCO Showcase app on the iPad, iPhone and Apple TV. So that's it for this week. I'll speak to you next time.